Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here for episode 14 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series. So last episode I uh, asked you guys to pick the topic for today's tutorial and the only votes that I got were for jet fuel. So uh, today I'm showing you how to make jet fuel. Um, there's two methods for making jet fuel. The first method I'm going to show you is how to make it using only Rotary Craft and then I'm going to show you how you can make it with a mod interaction with Buildcraft. Uh, and you probably figure out what that's about already. But anyway, in order to make jet fuel, you need, first of all, you need ethanol. So make sure you have that uh, production of that going. Um, but you're going to need what's called the fractionation unit, um, which is crafted like this. It's crafted with six gold ingots, and this time you cannot use electrum. There is no electrum. Um, uh, recipe, it's just gold. Uh, a base panel, a mixer, which we uh, I showed you how to make when we made the obsidian factory, and then a fuel line. So it's really simple to make. Um, a bit of gold, some obsidian to make the fuel line. Um, quite a bit of steel, but you know it's not very, it's not bad. It's pretty good. Um, not that uh, difficult to make this machine. Now the fractionation unit uh, requires 65 kilowatts, which is the output of a gas engine. And it requires it at uh, 8 kilorad uh, radians per second. So 8,192 uh, radians per second. So if we come over here, I've got some things set up. So I've got a gas, uh, a gas engine set up um, producing 65 kilowatts at 128 newton meters. And we need 8,000 newton meters. Now, if we take the 8192 and divide it by the 128, it comes out with a 64 to 1 ratio, which you can get with a... where's my 16x gearbox? Yeah, 16 to 1 gearbox. Um, and then a 4 to 1 gearbox, because if you divide 64 by uh, 16, you get a 4, which means you need a 16 and a 4. It doesn't mean you need 4 16s, because that would be, uh, you know, 16 uh, uh, to the 4th power would be a really massive gear ratio. So put, we'll put both the gearboxes down, set them into speed mode, and we'll place a fractionation unit up here. So what it looks like, you have to put power in the bottom. And uh, th add this this is the, the minimum amount of power that it requires. It'll, it'll run with, at an operational speed of uh, 10 seconds. It says that it's missing ingredients right now, obviously, because we haven't put anything in. So if we open the GUI, this might look confusing, but it, it really isn't at all. You just need to add the seven uh, items that it requires, and it'll uh, create jet fuel and store it in an internal inventory. And it can actually store a heck of a lot, 240,000 units of jet fuel just in its internal storage. So um, you may not even need a tank for, for quite some time with this. Okay, so we've got our fractionation unit. What is it that we need in order to make uh, jet fuel? Well, the um, first most obvious ingredient is we need ethanol. Uh, and by the way, there is no specific uh, way you've got to put these in here. Um, we need You can put them anywhere. We need ethanol crystals. That's our fuel source. We also need coal, blaze powder, magma cream. So you need both of those. Netherrack dust, which we can get by putting netherrack in the grinder. And then tar sand, which we also get by putting soul sand in the grinder. And then you have to put a gas tier in here. Um, this is like, the, the manual says this acts as a solvent. This does not get consumed. So you only need one gas tier. So we place our gas tier in here and now the fractionation unit starts working. This is our little progress meter. And you can see how long it takes. I mean, it, it takes, at, at minimum power, it does take quite a while. You know, it takes 10 seconds. And then it produces, right there it produced uh, 2,009 uh, millibuckets of jet fuel. This I don't know if this number is con the number is not um, consistent. It, it seems to produce varying amounts of fuel per operation. It doesn't consume um, one of each of these every single time. You see that time it only consumed a blaze powder. So um, these these items will probably last in here for a decent amount of time. Sometimes I think sometimes it consumes more than one. I'm not sure, um, but it doesn't it doesn't use one of these every single operation. So this will operate more than 64 times. Uh, you know, as long as, uh, I don't know if it's random or what, that time it didn't seem to consume anything unless I missed it. But, uh, so that's the fractionation unit um, at minimum power. 10 seconds per operation uh, to produce uh, jet fuel. See there, it, it can sometimes take multiple items. Sometimes it only takes one or two. Sometimes it does. So, you know, it's a bit randomized, but um, it does ensure that your items don't all in run out immediately. Um, so, yeah, let me take this items back. 
Okay, so we, we produced 10,000 millibuckets of jet fuel while, b after watching this run a couple of times because it's 10 seconds. Now I'm going to show you how you can power this um, and how I would probably power this uh, to get a, a, a much faster speed. So I'm over here at my hydrokinetic engine and we've split the power in half because uh, we're still running our grinder over there. And so we've got 262 kilowatts um, outputting over here. Now it's important to note that the fractionation unit does not require a minimum torque. It only requires speed, which means we can get this all the way down to one newton meter of torque in order to maximize our speed to get uh, maximum to get maximum um, speed off this thing, um, which is what we did over there. So, if you want to run this off of a quarter megawatt, uh, then the, what you have to do is if you if you place uh, actually three sixteen to one uh, gearboxes and then a two to one gearbox all in the speed mode. What you end up getting is you end up getting 262 kilowatts at one newton meter, so it's all been turned into speed. And that gives us an operational time of only four seconds. So if I go ahead, and you can shift click these things into the uh, inventory over here. They'll go into their into various spots and it'll work just fine. Now we can see this is running quite a bit faster. Quite a bit faster. So um, yeah, this is going to produce uh, qu jet fuel quite quickly. Um, for you running at this uh, super high speed here. So yeah, so that's going quite uh, quite quick. We've already produced um, 63.21. How much did we produce over there? 10,000. Let's see how long it takes uh, compared to last time. And probably going to hit it. Nope, not that time. So we might hit it now. Well, we're going to hit it now. Yep, uh, 11,000. So in a very uh, short uh, period of time, um, we can produce that much. That's This is a lot of... Uh, material to invest because this is a really high speed. If we go into here and we go to shaft load limits, always remember your shaft load limits, guys. We are at 262 uh, kilowatts uh, radians per second. You'll notice that um, steel can only take 55,000 um, radians per second. Uh, it actually requires diamond to get to um, this amount of speed. Which means that you wouldn't have to make every single one of these out of um, uh, out of diamond. But if we take a dynamometer and we pop it on um, this first one here, see you you, you could easily use a different material um, for this all, as long as it well not necessarily. You, the thing about this really long chain of gearboxes is that you have to make sure that at no point does the speed or the torque that you're transforming it into break the material you're going to use for the gearbox. So the this first gearbox is getting 8,000 uh, newton meters of torque, so you can't use steel for this first one because it, it's too much um, too much torque. You have to use diamond. And then um, once you've uh, cranked that, that over, uh, if we put the dyno back, now we're down to 512, uh, 512, which means you can actually, for this gearbox, use a uh, a, a, a less, a weaker material um, for this one. Um, at first glance, you'd think so. Now, if we switch this into speed mode and we put a dyno here, we can see that this box is getting us up to 8,000 uh, radians per second, which means you need to make sure that whatever material you use for the second gearbox can handle the 8,000 radians per second, otherwise it'll fail. And then if we place this, uh, the third one back and we swap it into speed mode, we get rid of this, put our dyno uh, right there. This uh, third gearbox has to be able to uh, withstand 131,000 um, radians per second, which is, uh, you can't use steel for this. So just make, be careful. Um, make sure that, uh, you know, you're not overshooting any, any, uh, this, this stuff and that it's going to be working properly. Oh, yeah. And always remember to switch it into the right mode. There you go. So that's um, four second operation, how to get it. Three 16 to one gearboxes with a two to one. Now I have tested this with the full output of, a hydro of this hydrokinetic engine um, from starting at you know 512 and getting it down to only one newton meter. And what that does is it cuts this in half. So it goes down to um, two seconds. So from, from this to the full power of this, you're really only cutting it in half. You're only really only losing two seconds. In my opinion, it's not worth it. Um, I think I'd I'd be perfectly happy running it at this at this speed. But don't um, think you can't run it at this speed. It's, it's perfectly fine. Ten seconds. Um, 
remember that these materials are not the easiest materials to get. So, you know, if, if, if it's going to take a while to run through it, it might not be that bad because, you know, you're, it's going to take you a while to get them all anyway. You're going to have to find some way to farm this stuff. You know, magma cream is not the easiest thing to get a hold of. Blaze powder isn't the easiest thing to get a hold of because blazes are pretty annoying to kill. Um, so you're going to have to set up some kind of farm uh, or, or something else if you want to mass produce this stuff. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about automatically uh, automatic mob farming with Rotary Craft in a future video. But anyway, that's the fractionation unit. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool, uh, pretty easy, not not too difficult. Um, let's talk about how to get the fuel out of here. So fuel lines can be attached to the top of the fractionation unit only to the top. Um, so you're gonna have to use fuel lines, or I don't know. It might accept. Uh, it probably accepts other uh, types of um, of. Uh, it, it probably accepts. Um, Flu ducts and stuff like that. I haven't done it myself because I like I find fuel lines work quite well. So you can use fuel lines. You can put it into a, uh, a reservoir, or you can put it into some other kind of um, uh, other kind of tank. Fill it up nicely with this bright pink uh, jet fuel. Uh, it's it's quite uh, a pretty color, uh, the pink uh, the pink fuel. So that that's that. Um, you can connect item ducts to this. Um, I haven't actually tested this to see if it works, but it apparently it works. Uh, you can connect them um, because you can't pump ethanol in its liquid form into the fractionation unit. At least I tried and it didn't work. Uh, I couldn't put um, liquid up, uh, up against this because fuel lines can only connect um, to the to the top. Uh, I, I mean, I assume that you need fuel lines for ethanol. Um, I haven't actually ever tried using um, a liquid pipe, but I, I would assume that wouldn't. Uh, Probably, probably work. Yeah, it doesn't cut either. So you have to put the ethanol crystals in here. So if you're um, like do doing like I am, melting it down your ethanol uh, and storing it in a large tank, if you're going to want to use uh, this to make fuel, you're going to have to turn that back into crystals um, in order to do it. And uh, I think I could do that with a crystallizer, but I'm not really, I haven't tested it. Anyway, that's how you use the fractionation unit to make jet fuel. So how do we use um, the other method. So the other method requires buildcraft because it, it uses buildcraft liquid fuel uh, as a um, as the starting point. So the fuel enhancer is the machine you're going to need for that, and it's crafted quite simply like this: with two gold ingots, four base panels, a mixer, and two glass panes. That gives you the fuel enhancer. So the fuel enhancer works very similarly to the fractionation unit in that you have to put power into the bottom, um, but it, it does work quite differently for the other. Um, ways that it works. So I'm going to grab a fluid duct, and I'm going to grab a fuel drum. Uh, I've got this drum full of uh, Buildcraft fuel, because um, we're going to be using that. So, how much power does this thing require, the, the fuel enhancer? It requires only 1024 kilowatts, so when one, one kilowatt. So it, it only requires the output of a, uh, of a DC electric engine, um, but it requires it at a one to one um, at, at full full speed. It doesn't require any torque. It's just like the fractionation unit. It requires only speed. So if we want to do that, we can put a 4 to 1 gearbox on this DC engine, set it to speed mode, and we get up to the 1 kilowatt that we need, and we see that this is now spinning. So how do we use this thing? Well, if you look at it, it says the input tank and output tank are both empty, and that's this top tank and this bottom tank. Um, so what we need to do is we need to put buildcraft fuel into this thing, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to attach a fluid duct to the top of it, and I'm going to use this fuel drum uh, to get myself some fuel, and then I'm going to use a screwdriver to change this. It's still on that servo. And then we can see that uh, buildcraft fuel is filling this top little tank. So it only holds five uh, buckets worth in its internal inventory, so you're going to want to probably pipe it in. Um, it's pretty good. And then if we right-click it, we see this is the, the GUI, the fuel enhancer. All it is is a bunch of slots to put stuff. Um, so we put the same type of things that we need that we put into the fa fractionation unit, except we don't need um, two of these. We don't need gas tears, we don't need coal. Throw in blaze powder, throw in magma cream, netherrack dust, and tar sand, and it starts working right away. See, it's converting this buildcraft fuel into jet fuel, uh, filling the bottom tank with our, a bright pink jet fuel. It's actually going at what I would consider a quite a decent rate, really. Um, so, you know, if you want to, if you've already built up with buildcraft, and you're, if you've got a bunch of, or if you've got a bunch of oil over here like I do, I mean, look at, look at this giant oil field. Um, 
it might be worth your time to use uh, to, s to set up a build craft fuel production be uh, rather than maybe trying to make it all out of ethanol because you've got this much oil available and I'll um, probably set that up later and then I'll show it to you but look I mean look at all this look at this giant oil field I would be I would be crazy not to use this to make my jet fuel because there's so much of it now there are a couple of caveats with using buildcraft fuel uh, to make um, jet fuel. For one, the uh, the ratio. There is a two to one loss ratio between uh, the buildcraft fuel and the jet fuel. So you will only get half as much jet fuel as fuel that you put in. You know it does and it does use up these um, things here. So let's let's get a fuel line and we'll stick it on the side and we can pull out our uh, our jet fuel. So it's going to use twice as much buildcraft fuel as jet fuel that you get out. So keep that in mind. Basically, though, that's the same thing that the refinery does between oil and fuel in Buildcraft. So it's not, you know, out of the blue. It's pretty, you're, you're pretty used to that if you use um, Buildcraft fuel. So yeah, so th this is how you can convert Buildcraft fuel into uh, Rotorycraft jet fuel. Um, so yeah, that's how you create jet fuel. So in the next video, we're going to go over the uses for jet fuel. Specifically, we're going to go over the two and the uh, um, I'm going to see how much I have time for. There are three, at least three machines that, that uh, require jet fuel. There are two engines, and then there's also a furnace that requires jet fuel. We'll see if we can get through all of that in one video. Um, eh, we probably will. So next video, we'll talk about the uses for jet fuel, but I hope now that you know how to, how to make jet fuel. Remember, it does require quite a few reagents, uh, even more if you're making it in the fractionation unit. So um, definitely consult your handbook, because all the ingredients that you need for jet fuel are listed in the handbook under the fractionation unit. So um, always remember, this handbook is a godsend. It is your best friend uh, when you don't quite know what to do. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed the episode. You now know how to make jet fuel. Um, stay tuned for next episode when we'll learn uh, what, what, how to use it. Uh, I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.